Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the final video for The Pen Habit Season 3. My name is Matt Armstrong, and as I always am, I am thrilled to have you back for yet another video here on this YouTube channel. Now, uh, at the end of every season, I like to do a, a top pens video. Uh, this is the third one, since this is the third season. And before I go on my summer hiatus, I like to kind of take stock of the pens that I've got in my collection and what ones are my favorites. And I get asked to do this video a lot. I'm not entirely sure why, because my top pens are going to be different than your top pens, but uh, I'm happy to do it because, you know, it's it's fun to review the pens that I've, I've talked through over the years and kind of give you a status update on where I am today. Now, before I dive in, uh, I want to take uh, uh, an extended moment. I do this often, but especially because it's at the end of the season, to once again offer my deepest and sincerest thanks to the the people who have supported me via all of the different methods, whether it's PayPal or Patreon or Venmo or or you know Google Wallet or who have the sponsors who have bought ad space on the website or the retailers and manufacturers who have sent pens and ink for review purposes this season. Uh, there was a huge wide range of stuff this season and I was thrilled to be able to, to experiment and play with a lot of different stuff I wouldn't have otherwise. Uh, and it is all very much thanks to you that I have been able to continue doing this. Um, as I'm sure you know, uh, at the end of my my first season, what became the end of my first season, I, I took a break because um, I was dealing with how much money I had spent and, you know, some of the, the snottiness that I was dealing with from online comments and things like that. Uh, I have received just nothing but a huge outpouring of support ever since, and I am tremendously, tremendously grateful for that. So thank you so much for joining me. Now, diving in. So I'm going to start with the top daily writers. Uh, this is kind of a category that I've, I've said, you know, around $200 or less. So, you know, cheap enough that if I lost it, it's not the end of the world. Um, just robust, solid pens that I can feel comfortable carrying with me that are dead consistent, that write perfectly every time. So this is my group. I'll, I'll start at the bottom and work my way up. And the first pen in my top five daily writers is this little beauty. This is the Delta Fusion 82. Now, Joe of the Gentleman Stationer blog recently did a post on his top three favorite pen brands, and Delta fell in that group. Um, I like, I have yet to have a Delta pen who's, which, on which the nib was not just wonderful. Um, and this Delta Fusion 82 is no different. Uh, this is a, in the Moonlight Flake Acrylic, and this is one of the exclusives to Chatterley Luxuries. I also did a review of the, uh, the Lavender version, or the Mauve version, what, whichever, um, and it's just a, a really wonderful nib. Um, you know, much has been said about the, the silly uh, gold saddle that is glued on to the top of the steel nib and how they get away with calling it a, an 18 karat gold nib. Um, despite that silliness, I consider this to be just a really, really wonderful writer. It's consistent. It's smooth as all get out. Um, it's got a big ink capacity. You could use it as an eyedropper if you wanted to. Um, this, this is a pen that is just rock solid for me and writes wonderfully every single time. I like it and I think it's a very attractive, especially this material. It's just very attractive. Um, number four, and by the way, I'm going to cheat all over this video. So, you know, it is what it is. Deal with it. Number four, I'm actually doing two pens, um, and it's, it's more of the manufacturer than the, the exact model. But this is the Edison Collier which is around $150, $160. This is the Edison Menlo. Now, this is quite a bit more than the kind of upper $200 limit that I set. Um, in general, Edison pens are wonderful writers. This Collier is just superbly comfortable, but I love the Menlo. The Menlo has the uh, pump filler mechanism in here, so the you know, the kind of the like the vacuumatic mechanism from the old Parkers, but they call it the pump filler. Uh, it's a bit of a pain to clean, but it has a nice ink capacity. The Menlo in particular just has a very nice form. It's very comfortable in the hand. Um, 
you know, I, in the review I talk about it having nice energy all the way through the tip of the pen. Uh, the Collier, and this is their blue steel acrylic, I believe. Again, very comfortable section. You know, Edison has great steel nibs. If you wanted to use this as an eyedropper, you could. It's a huge in-capacity eyedropper or standard converter cartridge pen. Really nice options here. So I like both of these a lot for daily workhouse workhorse pens. Uh, the next one is one of the most overlooked pen brands, I think, on the market today, and that is the Platinum 3776. Now, I have the Chartres Blue and the Burgoyne Red here. Um, they also come in black. Uh, they come with rhodium trim or gold trim. They have music nibs, and depending on where you get them, you can even get them with soft fine and soft medium nibs, which are, are lovely nibs. The soft nibs are, are so, some of my favorites. Um, in general, very well made. These are clearly mass-produced pens, but these pens in particular have that um, slip and uh, seal cap system that basically will, you know, according to Platinum, will keep the pen's nib wet for up to two years without being used. So, uh, you know, this is a, a great pen to use if you, it's going to sit around for a little while and not and not get any use. Uh, uses proprietary cartridges, which I'm not a huge, or converters, which, you know, I've said before, I'm not a huge fan of, um, but really lovely pens, great material. I just love the Chartres Blue. Um, and quite affordable, especially, you know, if you buy them here in the States, uh, you know, in the U.S., they, uh, uh, the price is set um, high. If you buy them direct from Japan, you can get them for cheaper, but you're not going to get the warranty. Um, I ordered this Burgoyne one from Japan and got a really good price on it. It didn't come with a converter, so I had to buy an extra converter here in the States. So um, just, you know, caveat emptor if you decide to buy um, from a non-authorized retailer or buy from a retailer where you're not going to get a warranty. Number two on my... Uh, on my top workhorse pens is this little beauty. Now, I did a review of the Diplomat Arrow earlier in the season. Um, it was the, the gray version or the black version, um, which I gave away. And shortly after that, uh, I, that giveaway, I got this lovely brown version um, on Mass Drop. And uh, it's a great writer. Some of the best, one of the best steel nibs I've ever used on any pen ever. Uh, really wonderful steel nib, uh, rock solid. You know, it's it's a bit heavier, um, but this nice matte finish texture is just absolutely superb. Um, very comfortable in the hand. Nice weight to it, but without being too heavy. Uh, it posts nicely, even if you want to post the pen unique design. I, I just really, really like this Diplomat Arrow a whole bunch. So that's my number two. And finally, my number one workhorse pen in my collection currently is the Franklin Christoph Model 2. Now, this is the new Franklin Christoph Model 2 in Italian ice, and it's hard to tell in this light. This light is very even, um, but if you take this out in sunlight or um, light with UV in it, it glows purple. Um, you, and you can see pictures of these just glowing. So put it in a stream of sunlight and you'll get this really bright purple glow. Um, it's a very interesting material. Uh, one of the reasons I like this pen as a workhorse is, A, it eyedroppers beautifully and it's got this big ink capacity. Or you can use a cartridge converter. But B, I love the way this pen posts. It posts very deeply, um, and the wider top here actually helps it to sit very nicely in the web of the hand. They also moved the, the kind of the Acme threads or the block threads up to the end of the section as opposed to back here, so there are no threads on which to rest your hand if you like a higher grip, um, which I think is just a, a, a brilliant design choice. Uh, you can get the nibs in steel or gold. Uh, this is a steel fine nib, uh, but I also have a 14 karat gold and an 18 karat gold Franklin Christoph nib as well, um, both of which are, are quite nice. And they're interchangeable nibs, so you can get a bunch of different options. So this is one of my favorite workhorse pens. Um, you can have a huge ink capacity if you need it, or you can use a converter if you need it. It's I think attractive. If you like demonstrators, that's certainly an option. They also have other pens. If you're if you're not into demonstrators, um, 
there are other options for you as well. But I feel like uh, this is this is a neat model and one that I like. It's grown on me over time. It was not, I liked it, but I wasn't like gaga over it when I did the review initially. But as time has gone on, I've grown to like the Model 2 a lot more. Okay, so next up we're going to do my top five pens under $100. Um, for those of you who are a little more budget conscious, that's something to, that's kind of this list is for you. Um, before we go there though, I should mention, I meant to mention this earlier, but forgot. Um, I only really had two rules for this list. One rule is it had to be a pen I've already reviewed. There are several pens in my collection which might have made these lists, but since I haven't done a review, it doesn't count yet. And the other one is no pen could appear on the list more than, on any list more than once. So in, uh, I, I don't think I had a lot that were going to be crossovers here, but uh, I basically said I only want to put, uh, I only want to use a pen on one list in this process. So those are my rules. Now, before I dive in, there are a couple of uh, honorable mentions I'd like to add. One is the Ace of Pens Daily 3-in-1 that I reviewed earlier this season. And the other is the Ranga uh, Peyton Street Pens or Ranga Peyton Street Pens. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try to get this right. Zayanti. I think is Zayanti, Zayanti. I, I was pronouncing Zayante or Zayante or something like that. Zayanti is, is how it's pronounced properly is what Terry told me. Both of those pens are pens that I liked quite a bit. Um, both Indian made from Ebonite. Uh, interesting, you know, nice designs, good nibs, uh, really solid pens for under $100. And there are a lot of options in this group. So these are just my personal preferences. They're not going to line up with a lot of people's personal preferences. I'm not being contrarian just for the sake of being contrarian. That's just kind of where I fell on things. So my number five pen is the Pilot Prera. I did a review of the Pilot Prera earlier this season um, uh, from Pen Chalet. It was a really nice pen, a really nice writer. It is the same nib that's on the Pilot Metropolitan. Uh, the pen is made of plastic instead of metal. Um, but it's larger. The, it's It's got a wider girth. It's more comfortable in the hands than the Metropolitan is for me. Um, so I found myself really enjoying using the Pilot Prera uh, in a way that I never found myself enjoying the Pilot Metropolitan. So that was number five. Number four is kind of a Franken pen of sorts. This is the Jin Hao X450. Uh, of the very inexpensive Chinese pens, this is one of my favorites. Um, you know, it's got the click cap, but for me, what makes, what takes this pen from a good pen to a great pen is the addition of a $15 Goulet Pens Yovo nib. Take, you know, take the stock Jin Hao nib out, put the Yovo pens or the Yovo nib in there, and all of a sudden this pen just starts to sing. Um, I use this pen almost exclusively for Noodler's Bay State Blue. Um, I generally have have those, you know, a, a highly staining ink or a highly permanent ink available for addressing envelopes and things like that. You know, at five bucks to seven bucks, this is a really great pen. Um, or it's a good pen, but you put a $15 nib in there. So for under $20, you're still going to get just a spectacular writer. It's solid. Um, and again, this probably would have made my daily writer list too if I hadn't put it on the top five under a hundred. All right, up next is at number three, the Keras Customs Ink. This is a machined metal pen that uh, comes from the folks at Keras Customs in Mesa, Arizona. It is the olive green with a copper section and a steel Bach nib. You can also get a titanium nib if you wanted one. Uh, really nice pen, uh, very comfortable in the hand. Uh, robust as all get out. Um, you know, you literally can throw this pen across the parking lot and run over it with your car. Brian Goulet did it in his video. Um, you know, it'll pick up a few dings, but this is a pen that, uh, you know, would withstand the nuclear holocaust. <laughs> it, uh, it's a rock solid pen and for under a hundred, under a hundred bucks, a, a very good value in my opinion. Uh, number two is the much talked about Twisby Eco. Now, you either love this pen or hate it. <laughs> it doesn't seem to be a whole lot of in-between. I really like this pen. It is one of the least expensive piston fillers on the market today. Uh, and this one was provided, oh, I probably should take the cap off, provided courtesy of Goulet Pens uh, for review purposes. Really lovely pen, 
um, comfortable. Twisby seems to have taken care of a lot of the cracking issues that they've dealt with. One of the best Twisby nibs I've ever used. Um, it's, uh, it's comfortable in the hand. It's inexpensive. It's solid. I don't love the cap, but now they're making a clear version of the cap, which is probably what I would prefer if I were to do this all over again. It's disassemblable, so it's very easy to clean. In general, this is quite a nice pen, and uh, for around 30 bucks, you really can't find a better deal, I don't think. Um, the final pen is one that, unfortunately, I don't have with me, so here's the picture. Uh, it is the Faber-Castell Loom. This has become my favorite pen to recommend for first-time pen people. It is a metal pen, so it's a little heavy, and it's a bit on the big side, um, but it is really, really solid. And uh, Faber-Castell, I've used several of their, their nibs, and they all seem to be very good nibs. I've yet to have a Faber-Castell nib that wasn't great. Um, uh, so this is uh, kind of their en one of their entry-level pens. Some of the designs are not my favorite, um, but some of them I really like quite a bit. The one that I reviewed, which is the, the silver one, uh, I really the matte silver version, I really like a lot. And uh, it's quite comfortable in the hand. So this is a pen that I like quite a bit, um, and it's kind of become my number one recommendation for for people who are just getting into the hobby and want to try their first fountain pen. Uh, you know, Obviously, the Metropolitan and the Safari are good options for, for those people, but if you want to step up the game a little bit and f feel something a little bit more luxurious, I, I recommend the Faber-Castell Loom. And now the moment some of you have been waiting for. <laughs> it is my top 10 pens list. Now, once again, let me remind you, this is my top 10, not yours. It will differ. If you're going to complain that they're all expensive, save your time and energy and go complain on someone else's blog because, you know, like these are my top 10. Uh, not yours. Mine. Mine. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm getting to the end of season giddiness, can you tell? Uh, all right. Uh, so I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up. And at number 10 is a pen I reviewed back in, I believe, season two. Uh, and those of you who have been around know this pen pretty well, I'm sure. This is the Nakaya Decapod, a Japanese-made pen uh, with relationship to the, the Platinum. They, they're not part of Platinum, but they, the, the founder of Nakaya worked at Platinum for a long time and has relationships with them. So um, lovely ebonite pen, 10-sided ebonite pen with uh, a multi-layered Urushi lacquer. This is the Heki Temenuri finish, which is the green-brown finish. Um, so they did several layers of green and then brown on top and then polished it so the green shines through. And it's just, this particular form factor really shows off that finish beautifully. Um, made with exceptional precision. I like how they even lacquered the threads, which on some of their pens they don't do. Um, you'll notice here that this is not a Nakaya nib. It's actually a platinum nib. Now, I did have a Nakaya nib. Uh, it was, I had it custom ground for me into a broad oblique that I didn't care for. Um, I still have the nib. It's in one of my platinums right now, but uh, these pens use platinum nibs. So I got an inexpensive platinum with a soft fine nib, and you'll notice here, I'll flip my flip my pad over here so I don't ruin my surface. It's got a nice, you know, so it, the ink is, I haven't used this for a few days, so the ink's probably not down at the nib tip, but uh, uh, here we go. Let's get it started, but it's got a nice, uh, lovely, soft, bouncy, the, the soft nibs, these platinum soft nibs are some super nice nibs. Uh, I like them quite a bit, so dry this off so I don't get ink on my pad, flip it back over, and finish talking about this pen. Now, these are not cheap. Um, they're, you know, handmade. They're very limited in, uh, in retailers that carry them. There's only, as far as I know, one authorized retailer here in the U.S., and that's Classic Fountain Pens, or Nibs.com, um, which is John Modishaw's company. And Really quite a lovely, lovely pen. Feels great in the hand. And now that I've got a nib that I like in it more, this has been slowly working its way back up the list of, of one of my favorites. Uh, next up is a pen that has never made the list before, 
but that I find myself continuing to come back to time and time again. That I I I got this very early in my co- collecting career. This is this is clearly the Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age, which is the the maxi size, um, made of the uh, the resin, the lava rock resin. Um, It's technically, from what I understand from reading online, lava rock that is infused with resin as opposed to having the resin ground up and and cast, um, and then it's machined. I adore this material. I love the way it feels. It is a heavy pen. It's got the the dual reservoir power filler, um, which is okay. Uh, you know, I, I, I do wish it had an ink window, but that's a minor complaint. And the nib, when it came, as happens with some Visconti pens, uh, was not well adjusted. So it did need to be adjusted. I took it back to the store that I bought it from and he adjusted it for me. Um, that was back when I still had my local store. It's a palladium, 23 karat palladium dream touch nib and, uh, got that neat, uh, hook and latch capping system. I love the hygroscopic nature of the the pen. It kind of absorbs moisture and and stays cool under the fingers. It's really quite a lovely pen. And one that I find myself returning to more and more often all the time. Uh, Let's see, what's next on the list? Oh yes, 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 yes. This is the Delta Federico Stantufo. This is a, a Marte Modena exclusive. Uh, in uh, from the Italian online manufacturer Marte Modena, this is the piston-filled, less expensive version of the uh, the um, Dolce Vita. So this is the this is kind of the the bargain Dolce Vita, but it's piston-filled, which I like quite a bit. Um, like I said earlier in the workhorse pen section, Delta nibs are wonderful. The nib on this is also wonderful. It's smooth and nice and wet with a little bit of bounce. Uh, no problems at all with this pen. It has been really a lovely, superb writer across the board. I'd, I'm not a huge fan of orange and black. Um, you know, I, I don't love that color combination so much, but it is a it's pretty orange material, and it's a really nice pen. Next up is a pen that has a lot of sentimental value. To me, this is the Sean Newton Sumter. Sean is a custom pen maker uh, who quit his job a couple years ago to become a full-time pen maker and has really been doing some neat work. Uh, superb craftsmanship. This is the Green Rip or Green Ripple Ebonite with ivory celluloid. Uh, I call this my piano practice pen um, for for reasons that are explained in my uh, in the review of this pen. Uh, just a lovely pen, beautiful workmanship. I adore these materials, uh, you know. And and Sean did a, a a grind of an oblique steel nib on this pen, which is really quite nice. One of the better obliques I've ever used. And uh, man, the 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 man knows what he's doing. He has uh, he's really put together some some good stuff lately. Even the, you know, custom clip that's starting to get a little tarnish and everything. So uh, really love that pen as well. Next up is a vintage um, pen. Now, if you've seen my videos at all, you've heard me talk a lot about this pen. Um, I love this pen. It is a Waterman's Ideal Number no. 7 with a red flexible nib. This is, I believe, from around 1929. Um, you know, nice keyhole nib there. It's uh, just a wonderful writer. Nice, flexible you know, flexible nib. Um, it's cosmetically not in the best of shape, but, you know, I I would encourage you to, to say of anything made in 1929 that it was still in cosmetically wonderful shape. Uh, you know, it's a little faded. Uh, you can see here the, the fading between the what's under the cap and what's not. And there's some brassing on the clip and, and the, the cap band is discolored and things like that. But it really is a, a lovely, lovely pen uh, and a great writer. And uh, when I need a flex pen, this is, you know, nine times out of 10, the pen I reach for. It's, uh, 
It was an eBay find. I didn't even know really what I was bidding on. I just wanted a flexible nib, and I don't think I could have picked, with the exception of the pink nib, which is you know a unicorn in the fountain pen community, uh, I don't think I could have picked a, a better pen for me because it's the right size. Most vintage pens are too small for me, um, for what I like, and, uh, and it just writes like a dream. So really enjoy that pen. Okay, now up to the top five. Next up is my number two pick from the previous year. This is, oh my gosh, you know what? I forgot one. Before we come back to that, number nine. I forgot number nine. This behemoth here is the Wall Eversharp Deco Band made of rosewood ebonite. I pre-ordered this at the DC show in 2015 from, uh, from the new Wall Eversharp. It comes with the super flex nib, and this one is actually inked right now, which I totally forgot when I wrote on my hand, so um, really great nib, very smooth, nice, flexible feel to it, um, and, uh, you know, lovely pen. My only complaint, the reason it didn't score higher is it's just so big. Um, it's, it's a little, and I almost never say this, it's a little too big. Um, so I, I love the pen, I love writing with the pen, but it's, it's just a little bit too big for me to use all the time. Um, so that's why, it's, that's why it's so low on the list. It may bubble itself back up or back down in the future. Who knows? Okay, so now back to number five. This wasn't number two, but I have had, uh, or excuse me, number four. This is number four. I've got my numbers all messed up here. Uh, this is number four. This was number two last year. This is the Visconti Divina Elegance in blue. Uh, silver trim with this lovely blue swirl acrylic that I believe is the same acrylic they use on the Saturno, uh, the blue Saturno. Um, really lovely pen. Captured converter uh, filled pen here. Uh, you can pull that out and, and use that to, to ink up the pen. Dream Touch nib again. I... I used to not like the Dream Touch nibs, but I am growing to love them more and more as I use them. Uh, this is really smooth, very bouncy and wet. Um, my only real complaint is it doesn't have a huge ink capacity because it's not a piston filler, it's a captured converter, and that cuts down on the ink capacity. But man, it is such an attractive looking pen that uh, I just I just love this pen. I love to write with it. It's of all of the pens, it's the one, one that gets probably the most attention from anyone with the exception of my uh, number th my next pen on the list, which was my number one from last year. And that, of course, is my Omas Ogiva Celluloid. Omas, may they rest in peace. So those of you who didn't hear early in 2016, Omas uh, basically announced that they were their, their parent company was um, going to be shutting them down. And, uh, and so far I've heard no news about them being bought out by another organization. So right now they're, they're just wrapping up. Uh, I, I don't know if they're even wrapping anything up anymore. Uh, if anyone's on in staff to do, uh, re repairs or anything, but this I bought, uh, a while back. It is the Brown Arco celluloid and, you know, clearly as you see me rolling this pen back and forth, this is an eye catching material. Some people really like it. Other people really don't. Um, I particularly love it. I think it's gorgeous and eye-catching. People commented on it all the time. And this one has a extra flexible nib. It is a 14 karat kind of semi-flex nib. Really nice, bouncy feel. Uh, it probably, I, I, need to, I need to take this to a good nibmeister and have them work on it a little bit because it's, not as smooth as I would like. I'd like to get some more smoothness to it. But, uh, you know, one of the things Omos did that I really liked was ebonite feeds. They made their feeds out of ebonite, which helped with ink flow significantly. Um, you know, they, Omos was, was my favorite uh, Italian pen manufacturer. And uh, they are sorely missed already in the industry. I'm, I'm very sad to hear that they went out of business. Number two is a, a new addition to the list this year, um, and one that I was shocked made it in, in truth. 
It is the Aurora Optima Oroloid. This is the blue version. And the reason I was shocked it made it is because this pen is so small compared to what I normally like. But the reason I love this pen is this section. This is just about the perfect section ever made on any pen ever. Got a nice ink window here, uh, super smooth piston filler, wonderfully adjusted nib, but this section makes this pen an absolute joy to hold. When I'm going to sit down and write six, seven, eight pages, not that I hardly ever do that anymore, but when I'm going to sit down for a marathon writing session, this is almost always the pen I go to. This would be my workhorse, this would be in my workhorse list if it weren't on my top 10 list and if it weren't so expensive, because this is not a cheap pen. But it is really a wonderful, beautiful pen, lovely materials, and one of the most comfortable pens I've ever held in my life. So um, I need more of these. So yay, Aurora. Welcome to, the, welcome to the top 10 list, Aurora. Now, da-da-da-da, number one. If you have watched any of my videos this season, chances are you already know what pen, or three, this is. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to my favorite pen of all time. The greatest of all time. My goat pens. These are the classic pen LB5s. Uh, good luck trying to find them because they have basically become impossible to track down anymore unless you buy them on, on the secondhand market. There were only 50 made in each color. I love these pens. I got the green one first, then I found a purple one, then someone contacted me. They were selling their brown one. Um, I have a white one on hold for me. And uh, this might be one of the only sets, the only collections where I will try to get the complete set. I'm not sure that I will, um, especially not at the prices that these pens are commanding these days. They've, they've gone up quite a bit in price um, because you just can't find them anymore. Um, but they are lovely pens. Uh, they are just as comfortable in the hand as can be. They are perfectly balanced. They've got these beautiful Sailor 21 karat gigantoid nibs. Um, the materials from which they are made are superb. This diffusion bonded acrylic is really, it's something else. It really just, it, it shines and shimmers and sparkles. I, I love this material. Um, I literally have not had a sing, I, I've had, I've never had all three of them uninked since I got the first one. I've always had at least one of these inked at all times. Uh, I love this pen. I love it. It is my favorite pen, um, and and by a pretty significant margin. Uh, you know, when I did the review, I said, if there were ever any pen to make me stop buying pens, this might be it. And that that was, you know, I don't know when I did this review back in January or February, maybe. Uh, that is still true today. Uh, I, I just adore this pen. So that is my top 10. So a quick review. We've got the Nakaya Decapod at number 10. The Wall Eversharp Deco Band at number nine, the Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age at eight, at seven, the Delta Federico Stantufo, at six, the Sean Newton Sumter, at five, the Waterman's Ideal number seven, at four, the Visconti Divina Elegance, at three, the Omas Ogiva Celluloid, at two, the Aurora Optima Oroloid, and at one, the Classic Pens LB5. So, that is going to do it for season three. Uh, it has been a crazy season. It's been a fun season. It's been a little challenging. Uh, it has been rocked by scandal. It has been uh, clouded with a little bit of disappointment. I lost my job during this season. Um, I picked up some wonderful new sponsors. Um, uh, please allow me to thank them. Pen Chalet, Pen World, uh, La Corunda de Comte, and Fonto Plumo, who advertise on my website and have provided pens for review. Also, a huge thank you to Gold Spot Pens, Goulet Pens, and Van Ness Pens, and I'm sure I'm, oh, uh, Peyton Street Pens. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting some other people in there too. I apologize if I am. Oh, uh, Kenro, and uh, for, for providing pens uh, for review purposes. A huge thank you to the viewers who have sent me pens to review. It has really been a crazy season. 
Um, for the first time since I started doing this, I have more pens to review than I know what to do with. Uh, basically, I've almost got enough pens to last me through all of next season too, which is great. Uh, right now, I will, I will be back. It's looking like it's probably going to be in September. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'll still be videos, doing some videos now and then. Uh, I mentioned earlier the Currently Inked uh, interviews or discussions that I've been having lately. Those will probably continue. I may pop up on a couple of other podcasts or in a couple of other places, and I'll do some written blog posts. But the reviews are going on hiatus so I can clean out the mountain of pens that I've got inked right now. I think I'm up to 35 or 40 pens with ink in them. So I need to do a big old cleaning. I need to, to recuperate, set the schedule for, for the, the coming season, and uh, probably pre-record a whole bunch of new videos. I'm going to be getting some new equipment, some new lighting uh, to make these all better. And all of this is hugely thanks to you. Across the 2 million uh, video view this year, I think I'm over 18,000 YouTube subscribers. Uh, it has really been a crazy, crazy year, and I could not be more grateful. Um, I've, I really have enjoyed, uh, enjoyed my participation with the community and with all of you this season. And, you know, it, it's interesting. I was, I was on the phone with someone the other day, another member of the Penn community, and I said, you know, when I started doing this, I didn't plan for it to become a big of a thing as it has. And it really has kind of taken on a life of its own uh, with the currently inked log and the website and the pens that I've been selling and the sponsors and the viewers and the comments and the discussions and the, the emails. I mean, it's really been, it's been crazy and wonderful and scary and overwhelming and invigorating and inspiring and a whole bunch of other adjectives that I could throw out right off the top of my head. Um, so as I wrap up this season, once again, allow me to thank all of you so, so much for allowing me to do this, to play in my hobby, to learn from you, to allow you to learn from me, for us to experiment and play with this crazy, weird, esoteric hobby together and, and really have a great time doing it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope you enjoyed season three and we will see you back here in September for season four. Bye. comfortable in the hand. Luke, shush. Shush. Lay down. Lay down. All the way. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the final video of Pen Habit Season 3. My name is Matt Armstrong, and if you've been around this, this channel for very long, you know that uh, this is, uh, this is a, a train wreck of an intro. That's what this is.